Thank you very much for the four presenters. Those were four excellent presentations. We'll now go into a Q&A session. Um, a number of questions have already come in. Uh, the first question was by Pumula, and this was um, to Eliano. Um, isn't there a way of confirming deaths of children uh, suspected, you know, those who are suspected to have died, uh, check the home affairs, death listings, and so on? Obviously, uh, Pumula here is referring to a system where you have a comprehensive uh, national death record system. So, uh, Eliano, could you comment on that? I think we are unable to get hold of Eliano. In the meantime, I think I will I will uh, bring up another question, and this time it's to uh, Hunt. It says, "Thank you." Uh, Gillian, did you manage to link the resistance results to clients' details? This would have helped to get details about the probable factors, say the duration of being on ART adherence issues for those clients. NNRTI resistance is worrisome. Are you almost 80% DTG transition? Um. Okay, thank you very much for that question. Um, I hope you can all hear me. Un unfortunately, our National Health Laboratory database does not necessarily connect to our treatment database within the country. So we were not able to establish that information, but absolutely agree that moving forward, this is something we need to explore. Um, Obviously, laboratory inf information systems also just work on a specimen to specimen basin basis and not necessarily patient associated all the time. So I absolutely agree this is something we're going to work forward to when we continue the surveillance on an annual basis. Um, as in terms of uh, transition to Dolly Tegreva, obviously, I think uh, this year has probably slowed down the transition quite a bit. We do not have official stats within country, but what I hear from uh, people in the field is that we're looking at about 50%. So 50% of people on treatment um, have been switched to Dolutegva based uh, regimens. Um, thank you very much, Hunt. Uh, just to follow up that uh, question, um, you indicated in your conclusion that laboratory information systems are not reliable systems in which to assess association of uh, HIV drug resistance to clinical and sociodemographic information. Um, you have already responded to, to that question in part, but how do you suggest that we should be using the information you have generated? So um, I think ideally, if if you do have access to um, to to clinical information, um, I mean, if you adopt this this type of surveillance approach, maybe then to retrospectively go and find the information of specimens that you have included in the survey. Um, certainly, there are other designs uh, that are being um, uh, being considered as well, um, and that is more of a more of a prospective approach. And that is, you know. If you countries, for instance, uh, treatment regimen is captured on the laboratory quest form, and then to actively uh, select specimens based on a defined criteria um, at the laboratories, rather than maybe, uh, you know, attaching that information afterwards. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hunt. Um, a question to Laura, Laura Torres. 36% uh, viral load monitoring if true, is really very low. What urgent interventions were put in place following the dissemination of your results? We actually haven't disseminated these uh, results yet, um, but we know that 36% is very low. Uh, last year, we actually looked at the 
same database, um, and we found with a different cohort that about 56% of people were being uh, covered with, with viral load. So right now, the, the strategies that we're implementing is trying to decrease the turnaround of viral load results um, and actually trying to push those guidelines of uh, making sure that everybody gets a viral load test after uh, six months of initiation and 12 months thereafter. But there's definitely a gap in terms of uh, what is the true coverage and there is, there is need to continue looking, looking at this. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Laura. And just to follow up, uh, you indicated that there were issues with um, turnaround time. Um, and obviously you've just commented on uh, timely viral load testing. Just give us a sense of um, turnaround times and, and such uh, uh, structural issues in, in Mozambique. The guidelines indicate that turnaround time should be at least or less than 15 days. Um, and actually I checked with the uh, CDC laboratory branch and that is around the average turnaround time that we have achieved lately. So it seems that we have been able to improve the, the turnaround time of our low test to meet that guideline of 15 days. Thank you very much, uh, Laura. Um, do we now have uh, Elianu uh, connected? Are you able to respond to a number of questions that have been posed? No, it looks as if we are not able to get hold of Ilianu. Um, but one question that um, probably is important and any of the panelists can respond to, it might sort of be directed to, 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 to Ilianu, but any of you could respond. Uh, the data that he has presented is from um, Baylor clinics in uh, seven countries. And to the best of my understanding, these are really centers of uh, excellence. Um, and um, these results are being generalized to, you know, programmatic circumstances in those countries. Is that uh, plausible? Can one really generalize uh, results from Baylor clinics to uh, what happens in those seven countries. Um, I'm not very familiar with the uh, standard of care in those Baylor clinics, but my, un my general understanding is that these are centers of excellence. Any of you could take on uh, those um, responses. All right, well then let, let me start. Um, so so I, I completely agree with you. I think uh, generalizability of findings in, in center of excellence is whilst I think they give you an indication of pattern, we do need to take caution about interpreting them on a national basis. Um, absolutely agree with you. And I think this is, this is something that we, we do need to spend quite a little bit of effort trying to develop over the next few years. But that, that couples with this move away from kind of sentinel site research and sentinel site surveillance towards, um, you know, monitoring trends and things through programmatic data. Um, absolutely right. The programmatic data does need to be uh, collected uh, quite, quite regularly. Um, but I think there is a strong move to it exactly for that reason. Certainly in South Africa, we're doing that. We're trying to move away from surveys um, and get back into to, to harnessing programmatic data, whatever it is from all parts of the country to establish what has happened programmatically. Uh, thank you very much, Laura. Okay, maybe I'll ask um, Basima a question. Uh, Jessica Basima. Um, you know, we 
were very keen that um, really we should be moving to same day art initiation, which has been uh, studied quite a lot in adults. And you've given information here about children. What is obviously worrisome is that there's poor retention post art initiation. Um, I'm an adult physician, and I find this a little difficult to understand since uh, the care of children, especially the younger children, is very much dependent on the behavior of the adults themselves. So this does reflect on um, adults taking children for uh, care after initiation of uh, antiretroviral therapy. Could, could you comment on that? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I agree with your comment that the care for children depends entirely on the caregivers. So uh, this greatly affects their well-being. If the caregiver is not a serious person, uh, most of these children, they will miss appointments. Uh, they will be represented by a caregiver and then they will miss important um, uh, observations and, and uh, routine follow-up bleedings because they are just represented by, by their caregivers. So this also affects their retention in care. Thank yeah. you very much, Pasimo. Right. There is a comment by uh, Caesar Baguma. Um, I think this is directed to, to Laura. Um, you know, regarding the rather low, um, the, the cascade that she had shown to us. And um, Baguma says, I think generalizability would be wrong, especially given that this program data are not necessarily staged studies. I would take it as an alarm for closer attention. So basically, um, what CISA is saying here is that one does need to really drill down into this data because the cascade was pretty alarming. Any comments on that? Yes, thank you. Um, this is uh, not program data. This is patient level data that is collected from a longitudinal database in Mozambique that has um, the information of patients in antiretroviral treatment um, in I wouldn't say most health facilities, but definitely the facilities with the highest volume of patients. Um, there are issues with the database and it's not right now an exact mirror of the electronic system. So there could be definitely um, issues in terms of, of the data that we're finding. Uh, and there might be um, some underestimation of our load coverage and regimen switch. Um, so I agree that we have to take the data with a, with a grain of salt, uh, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily wrong. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if I may ask um, Hunt um, a more general question, I know that her focus was on um, uh, specimens that were left over after they had done uh, tests in the laboratory. But could you give us a sense of the level of resistance? I know we're moving over to DTG, and therefore we're not really sort of focusing a lot, say, on effavirenz resistance, although we're still interested in um, NRTI resistance. Just give us a sense of uh, resistance levels from more clinical data in South Africa, if you are able to. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll do what I can. So in South Africa, we we do have um, we we do offer resistance testing for patients that are failing second line therapy, um, and we do have um, relatively good monitoring of of that data. But I think what we're not doing is getting to all patients that are failing. So we're not uh, offering resistance testing at first line, or we haven't been up to now. And therefore, that has been done through, as you said, through cohorts or through research studies or through um, targeted surveillance programs. Um, and generally, it was in the vicinity of about 80 to 9 percent of patients that are failing first line, um, are failing with resistance to efference. 
Um, so I think this is certain data that is probably uh, replicated or similar to what is seen in other countries. Um, and I think it is a cause con concern. I think efferens uh, might still be saying in some patients, and I think we need to just think of new strategies on how we're going to manage patients that for various reasons need to be on or remain on efferens based regimens. Thank you very much. Uh, Basima, in the one minute uh, left, could you comment on the state of uh, same day ART initiation among children and adults in uh, the Rakai area or in Uganda in general? Thank you very much. Um, same day ART initiation in children is, um, um, is in children and adults is a, a recommendation by the World Health Organization, but the decision to start uh, depends on the caregiver, especially for children, especially those who cannot consent, uh, especially those who cannot consent on their own. So the determination of the caregiver to give support and give the, the drugs and to accept this child to take drugs uh, immediately depends on the caregiver. So where the caregiver is not willing, definitely the child will not will not start the drugs because there will be no one to give to give them the drugs. However, where uh, consent is sought and um, they are willing to take, we actually give them the drugs, and they they are better treatment outcomes. So we really need to to support children in this. Uh, where the caregiver is not determined to support, we need to find an alternative if we are to realize good clinical outcomes for, for the children and adolescents. Thank you. So, thank you very much. So on behalf of my uh, co-chair, Flavia, let me thank uh, Torres, Eliamo, Hunt, and Basima for those excellent presentations. And thank you very much. Thank you all.